Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be making a Italian rum cake. We're gonna start with um, making the custards, the vanilla and the chocolate. I'm gonna do the chocolate one with you and then you can do the vanilla one on your own. It's basically the same thing. The only thing with the chocolate, you're gonna use the five, you're gonna use the five eggs, the cocoa powder and the sugar. And you're gonna mix this first, okay? Get that all blended nice. And then after this is blended nicely, we're gonna add in the cornstarch, and then we're gonna add the milk. Now I have the milk behind me um, getting hot. You do not want it to boil, okay? You just wanna get it like sort of scalded, okay? And it heats up quick, so I'm just gonna check on it. Okay, I'm still good. Um, Italian rum cake is really a traditional cake. I remember growing up having it at birthday parties. We had a baker that was across the street from where we lived that was a phenomenal baker. He would never get out of his recipes. He made the best cannolis that I've ever had in my whole entire life. Traveled all over the place. I've never found one as good as his. Okay, so to this we're gonna add the cornstarch a little at a time on low because we don't want this to bounce up on us. And you can do this with a whisk too if you don't want to use an electric beater, but you know that I'm a fan of the electric equipment. Usually the um, KitchenAid stand is my favorite. Once this goes, once we temper these eggs with the hot milk, it's gonna go back on the stove until it gets thickened. Don't be um, intimidated by this recipe. You could do this in steps. You don't have to make it all in one day. You could do the um, custards first, put them in the fridge, use them the next day, and then make your cake the next day, okay? Give me one second here. And this cornstarch is what really makes it get thick, so. When you're on that stove, you want to watch this. You want to whisk vigorously and watch it, okay? So, this looks like it's blended fine, but I am going to take a spoon. And I would use maybe a bigger bowl than what I'm using, okay? Just makes it easier for you to handle. Just a little bit maybe deeper. I'm just scraping the bottom of it and the sides, making sure I got all that cornstarch incorporated in. Okay, the milk should probably be ready. I mean, Take a look at it. Not just yet, but almost. So like I said, you just want it scalded, not boiling. Again, this is, um, this cake is really, really delicious. You usually decorate it with the Italian uh, buttercream icing, which you can see the video on that on my page as well. I'll be doing that later, but I'm not gonna videotape because it makes the videos too long. Um, but you could see it on the website, on YouTube. Um, usually decorated with toasted almonds. Some people use peanuts, but I like the toasted almonds. I think it gives it more of authentic look. Um, you're gonna make a rum simple syrup, and that's gonna be doused on top of each layer of the cake to keep the cake moist. Then we'll go a, um, a layer of the vanilla, custard, cake, we're gonna douse it again with rum, then the chocolate layer, and then we're gonna decorate the whole thing with the Italian um, buttercream. Let me check on the milk. And I think it's ready, so I'm gonna take this off the stove. And I'm going to start pouring this into the egg mixture here. Remember, you want to do a little at a time. 
because you don't want the eggs to curdle. So a little at a time, you can see I'm pouring it in here and I apologize, I have no assistance with video cameras, so it's me, me, and me. <laughs> but I'm pouring in a little at a time and mixing it. And then this is gonna go back on the stove. And we're gonna whisk it. And this is really, you can smell the chocolate, it's really decadent. It gets such a beautiful flavor, so you know the cake's gonna be really great. Anytime you have vanilla and chocolate together, that's a party. Okay, that's the end of the milk. I'm gonna stop this here and we're gonna put this back in the stove and I'm gonna show you how quick this gets thick. In one second, I'm gonna pour this over the sink so I don't make a mess. And you'll probably find some residue at the bottom of your bowl. Make sure you scoop that in. Get everything in there. This is possibly some of your cornstarch, okay? I think sometimes I'd rather just use the, use the whisk, to be honest with you. Okay, so let's go to the stove here. I'm gonna bring it with me. And we're gonna put this on a low flame. like on four, okay? You got a good view there. Got my whisk and I'm gonna be whisking. And it doesn't take long for this to get thick, so. And it thickens more as it cools too, so. I'm actually gonna raise the flame just a little bit. It's like four and a half. Just keep whisking, so it doesn't take long. I really want to thank you guys for watching the videos. I want you to ask you to please invite your friends to the to the page so they can um, share in the recipes as well. I try to. I did this page, um, and I've mentioned in different videos to keep the Italian traditions going. There's a lot of, I guess I don't know, younger folks that didn't take the time to listen to mom when they were in the kitchen. And so they missed out on a lot of recipes and sometimes their mom is unfortunately not with them anymore. So this is the, why, the reason why I'm doing these videos. It's also for my children as well. So that they have something to look back on. Because a lot of them, a lot of times don't want to be in the kitchen. <laughs> but as they get older, they'll want it and it'll sort of maybe be too late. So this is why I'm doing this. It's thickening. And to me, it looks like I need a little bit more cocoa powder in here, so I am gonna throw it in real quick. Only because I'm using just a little bit more because I need this pastry cream for something else, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more. But the measurements that you have are correct on the web page, okay? I just want to make sure it's nice and dark, that it stands out from the vanilla. Okay. All right, so I'm going to keep stirring this so it gets thick. And I'm going to put a film, a plastic film, over it when I pour it back into a bowl and you want the film to touch the actual custard and then put it in the refrigerator. And it can stay in there for a few days, especially if you're making this in parts, like I said, okay? And you can see it's thickening. All right, guys, we, when we um, finish with this, we'll start on the cake. 
Hi everyone, we're back. We're gonna make the sponge cake part of this recipe. So I'm not gonna call out ingredients because I'm making more than the recipe I gave you. So room temperature eggs, wanna throw them all in. Okay. And we're gonna whip these and gradually add the sugar in. And we're gonna let these whip for a pretty long time. We wanna get them very pale and whipped and buttery, airy. So on this goes. Now, I already sifted my flour a few times with my baking soda, okay? So that it's nice and fluffy. Um, I suggest if you make a lot of cakes and you like to, you know, um, do a lot of baking, the best thing I find is to add your flour into a container so that you could scoop and then level off with a knife. It's easier to measure that way and close the container and keep it airtight. And then you can sift into another bowl. So it's easier for you to get your ingredients that way. So that's what I do. Um, the Italian almond cake Italian almond rum cake is really a great cake. It is traditional. It's usually iced with an Italian buttercream. And I did make that ahead of time. I did make, you know, the custards. We did those together. And um, we're gonna make the simple syrup rum, which is a part of rum, part sugar, and a part water. So those three ingredients. So, We'll do that later on once the cakes are done. But while they're in the oven, we'll make that so that by the time the cakes come out, we'll give it time for that to cool and then we can start to put the cakes together. There's all the sugar. Now, as far as flavoring for the sponge cake, you can use um, vanilla or a combination of vanilla and almond. I'm using straight almond. I think I want the almond flavor in this one because we're gonna have the rum. I don't wanna use rum flavor. I think it'll just be overpowering. So I'm gonna put in my extract. And I love, love, love the smell of almonds, I have to tell you. The extract is just so delicious smelling. So I, again, I said, let this really whip. I use the stand mixer. You can use a hand mixer. You guys know that I'm a favorite of the stand mixer. leaves my hands empty. Um, I want to tell you a few tips while we're waiting for these eggs to um, aerate here. When you do your cakes and they're done cooling and you slice them to layer them, do your first, you know, assemble your cake, great. Put a thin layer of your, we call it a crumb coat, where it's a very thin layer of frosting, and then put it back in the refrigerator. Let that cake set, and then go ahead and put your next layer of frosting, um, or icing, however you want to call it. Uh, and then put it back in the refrigerator. That gives the time for that icing to set and get a little bit easier to work with. But you wanna leave your icing at room temperature out. I already made my buttercream icing, so I have that to the side. And again, wanna get these eggs nice and fluffy. Because the next part is a little tedious where we add in the flour, we're gonna sift it in in parts, and we're gonna hand um, fold in the flour. So I still want this to whip. I want to get it really, really um, aerated. And this could take some time. Because if you have a hand mixer and the wattage isn't strong, it could take quite, quite some time. You're also going to need a good spatula. I have to have this KitchenAid one. Not because it matches my kitchen cake mixer, but I like it because it's silicone and it's nice and firm. So, uh, a little more. I'm 
I'm gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl real quick. Only because I know that sugar hits the side of it and I want to make sure it's all in there. I've seen these mixers that have, they're a stand mixer of some sort they use in Europe and they have two of the whipping tool attached and it double double um, whips and it's so cool. I, I would love to have one of these things like for icings and whipping stuff like this. Now the eggs are getting where I want them to be. Nice, airy, and fluffy. And they're getting very pale, as you can see here. I'll lower it so you can see. It almost looks like a custard. But I just want to let it whip a little bit more. And then we're going to put in, we're going to fold in this flour. I already have the oven set at 350. I did line my pans with some parchment paper. I did not grease the sides of these pans. Repeat, I did not grease the sides of these pans. I put a drop on the bottom underneath of the um, parchment paper so that it sticks, okay? All right, guys, so I think this is good. And I'll show it to you. You could see here, I'm gonna take this off of here. You can see the eggs are like ribbons. Okay. This is gonna go into the sink. I just don't wanna make a mess from here to the sink. I was gonna lay this on here. Fits perfectly. And I'm gonna sift in the flour that I have in this bowl. So we're gonna do this in equal parts, maybe like four times. So I'm eyeballing the flour mixed with the baking powder and I'm trying to figure out how many times I will do that. So you see me sifting this in and then we're gonna fold this, okay? And move this back a little bit. And now we're gonna fold, okay? You see how airy that is? And we just wanna gently fold because the flour likes to fold to the bottom. So that's why we go from top to bottom. You see how it sits on top? It like doesn't, that's why you want to mix, mix, mix. You don't want to see any flour and gently. You don't want to overbeat this. That's why we stopped, refrained from using the beater portion or anything in the stand mixer, okay? And we're gonna repeat. Just gonna scrape off what I have on here. We're gonna put the sifter back on here and we're gonna put in another portion of the flour. And mind you, I already sifted this, but we're sifting it into the batter as well. You can't sift flour enough, I have to tell you. Okay, and once again, from top to bottom. And I'm using, I believe it's nine inch pans, okay? So that's why I made a little extra batter. If you were making a smaller cake, um, the recipe would be fine. And I'm gonna see, if I see that I like the way this came out for the nine inch 
uh, measurements and I will put what I use exact measurements for nine inch pans. I think they're actually eight inch, I apologize, eight inch pans. So, and again, we're just gonna continue to fold. We're gonna fold this until we see all the flour disappear. We wanna do it gently, okay? Just folding, getting all that flour incorporated. And this is still nice and fluffy. And again, from the bottom to the top, and you want to definitely scoop from the middle because that flour does like to fall at the bottom of these bowls. And you want to sort of like shake. If you see a lump and it looks like it's flour, well, the only thing can be is flour. Um, you want to give this um, spatch a little shake to see if it, that air pocket opens up and that flour comes out and we could beat it in, okay? I found one or two. Sometimes it's hard while you're talking and mixing to pay attention to what you want to say and what you want to do are two different things. So again, just folding this in. If you see that there's a little bit of flour, just take it to the side of the bowl, shake it. Don't be intimidated by any recipe, guys. Tackle them. Okay? Nothing is too hard. Take it in steps. And I tell you, this to me is my release time. This is when I wind down baking. I just doesn't really phase me. I just stay here and bake and I enjoy it because everybody disappears because no one wants to do anything or help me. So <laughs> we're going to get back to adding some more flour. You want to try not to over um, stir this too. Overwork the okay so this is the rest of it and again I'm gonna sift this in I'm actually gonna pause here and leave the rest in here because I'm gonna go back to it I think there's enough in here so I'm just going to go ahead and fold this in and again, from the bottom to the top, make sure you get that spatula to the bottom. But you can see how airy this dough is, this batter is, not dough, batter. The good thing about sponge cake is that sponge cake actually absorbs the flavors of what you put in between and it holds its shape. And because we're gonna put rum and all these custards, we want to have a good stable cake that's gonna adhere to all those components, you know? You wouldn't wanna take a cake that doesn't have those components and try to douse it with a liquor or simple syrup, okay? Again, gently folding from top to bottom, top to bottom in this motion. Just folding it. It's like you're folding clothes, okay? Top, okay, from the bottom to the top, I'm gonna to spin this around. And I found some flour, very easy to do. It's okay, we're just gonna work that. Must've been when I first, this last fold, 
I fold it over a bunch at a time. So, okay. I think we're almost there. Just want to double check. There's another little air pocket. That's why I shake the spatula a little bit. Because if I see anything, or if I don't see it, I will see it. Okay, I think we're good here. Okay, these are gonna go into the pans now. Okay, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And I think I'm gonna have enough for three cakes, so we'll see. And you know me, I always make more because the simple fact that I like to always give something that I'm making to somebody. So this is the first one. I'm gonna put this to the side here. Set the second one out. I sort of have enough here for one little small cake, which I might do because my mom doesn't like too much cream. So I think I'll make her just a two layer and I'll do half the side with vanilla and half the side with chocolate. I'm sure I'm gonna have a little bit of that left over. So every recipe, sometimes you have a little bit left over and you can make something else with what you have or if you're gonna bake something the next day so I have a little battle left. It's enough for like a small little, and I mean small little cake. Or I might just put it in there. I think I'll just put it in these and just do one cake. Let's put a little bit more. So it's just enough. All right, guys, I am going to put these in the oven. 20, 25 minutes. You want, make sure that these cakes get nice and brown on top. Do not underbake them, because then they'll um, deflate on you. Let them bake it nice and brown, okay? And also with this, um, you're gonna have little bubbles on top. Just try to smooth it out by getting rid of a little bit of those bubbles. Not that it really, really matters because we're making a layer cake, to be honest with you. But I could try to get rid of a little bit of those. I'm gonna do the same to this one. If your batter doesn't look smooth or, um, level just use your spatula if you have an offset spatula one of those flat ones used for um icing cakes you could use one of those too okay so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to give a little tap you see it brings up if you can see here it brought up the air bubbles Remember, this is very spongy. The batter is very um, light and airy. 
Okay. You could even take a thin, like skewer, or even a thermometer like this, and just run a little bit through it like this in circular motion. So if there's any air pockets down there, it will open up. Just doing a little twirl around. This way we're not disturbing the batter as much, but we are going ahead and breaking some of those air pockets. Okay. I am satisfied with this. All right, guys, into the oven these will go. Then I'll be back and we'll work on the simple syrup. All right, guys, the cakes are in the oven. We got some time, we're gonna make the simple syrup. So in here I got two cups of water because I like to always have a little extra of this depending on how I want to douse the cakes with rum. So I got two cups of water. I do have a piece of lemon zest in here. I just like to do that. Gonna add a half a cup. And then about a quarter cup, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and add our rum. Yum. So, one, two, three, four tablespoons. Please don't pour over the, I just did it, but don't do it. Don't pour over the stove, because God forbid you spill, your flame is gonna go all the way up and you're gonna get burned. So, I'm just gonna mix this to this heats up. It actually takes out the alcohol um, content leads back behind the flavor and the sugar dissolves. So I like to get this done ahead of time and then keep it to the side. So when the cakes are ready, this is ready and then we could go ahead and assemble everything. And I am going to, in a few minutes, taste this and make sure, just get another spoon and just taste it and see if it's to your liking. I'm gonna go ahead and smell it. it. Smells good. I might want a little bit more in it, let's see. And again, you put this to your flavoring, to your, to your palate of what you like to taste. I'm just gonna take a little I'm gonna add two more. It's good, but I like a little bit more. Okay. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna get this hot and then we're gonna shut it off and then we'll use when we assemble the cakes. Very simple. See, if you take this, if you take this recipe and do it in parts, don't be intimidated. It's step by step. And then at the end, all you do is assemble everything that you already have made. I could see my cakes from here. They're rising beautifully. So I'll show you real quick since they're in the oven. Let me just take you off here. And I will show you the cakes inside the oven. Look how nice they rose. Okay. I want those to get really brown, nice and golden, because if not, if they're not cooked all the way, then what'll happen is the um, cakes will deflate, like I said. So, a lot of people do not put the lemon um, rinds into the simple syrup. You don't have to put it. I just like to add it. It's just a thing I do. I try to make all the traditional but yet sometimes I do a little twist to them because I like to add something that I like. And that's a good thing. When you bake, you bake the way you like it. 
to your liking, to your palate, okay? Um, I think baking to me is something where you could use your creativity and it's nice to express yourself. So I am going to decorate this cake with a little twist, not your typical Italian rum cake decoration. I'm gonna go a little bit overboard. Not overboard, but a little bit off the beaten path. That's what I should say, okay? So I'm gonna finish up here. And then when these are all cooled off, we'll start to assemble them. All right, guys, we're back. So the cakes have cooled off. You can see it's nice and spongy. You can see when I press down, it comes right back up. Nice and spongy. So we're gonna start with the simple syrup. Okay, we wanna douse this really nice. And I have got to get one of those squeeze bottles because I don't know what I do with mine. But as you can see here, I'm dousing this really nice with the simple syrup as you want the cake to stay moist. The good thing about sponge cake, it always retains its shape. So you can never over soak this, okay? You wanna make sure you get all the area of the cake. At the very end, you should taste this throughout the cake. So you'll have plenty left over, I'm sure. So just douse away. And of course, I'm making a big cake, so we're gonna have several extra layers here. All right, Italian buttercream I have right here that I whipped up. We're gonna make a barrier, is what I call it, of the Italian buttercream around the whole edge of the cake. Okay. If you want, you could do two. I think one's enough. And we're gonna start with the vanilla on the bottom. I already whipped the whipped cream into the custard. I folded it in so it gets nice and fluffy. About a big heaping tablespoon is what I have on here. And we'll see if we need to put more. And I get my offset spatula. like somebody moved my offset spatula. Let me see if they put it in here. Here it is. Okay. So we're just gonna spread this around. And we're gonna need more of this on here. So let me put another dollop. So about two tablespoons. There we go, much better. Spreading it around. You wanna be generous with this too, because when you slice the cake, you wanna see that layer in there. You wanna get it all the way to that retaining wall. That's what I like to call it. So we're actually gonna add just a little bit more because I have enough for two layers of each and that's what I'm shooting for. Okay. I'm so happy the way the sponge cake came out. They're very, you know, if you don't do it right and make sure you let it cook and get really golden brown. This way it doesn't sink on you. Okay, that's that. Okay, so we got the first um, layer of the vanilla custard. We put the rum. Now we're gonna put another topper on. Okay. Line it up as best as you can. If you have to shift it around a little bit with your hands, do so, eyeball it, look at it. Looks good, I'm gonna press down a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna go with the rum, simple syrup again on top. You can see here how I'm laying it on. Really 
really nice. And you probably should have put this upside down, this layer, just because it, it won't roll off, but it's okay. Nice and all over the cake. And again, if you don't want to use, by the way, real rum liqueur, go ahead and use rum extract if that's to your liking. Remember, you make this, this is my um, way of making it. You can make it your way, okay? Now we're gonna go for another retaining wall here. Remember, you don't want to fill your um, icing bag more than halfway because then it'll come out the top. And we're doing another barrier here. And this will adhere the cake. So nice. Okay, now we're gonna go for the chocolate. And again, I fold it in the whipped cream. Now I gotta not that it would really matter because we're going to see it, but I'm going to rinse this offset spatula and dry it. Now we're just going to spread this around all the way to that retaining wall. And remember, when we press down the top of the next layer onto this, it's going to spread out that white barrier. Just a little bit more. You could use a scooper, like an ice cream scooper. Also, and you could just say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna put three scoops on each one and that way you're more even. I'm kind of eyeballing it. And again, all the way nice to the edge, okay? Maybe a little more. I like chocolate. Who doesn't like chocolate, right? Okay, just a little bit more. And make sure you spread it all the way even, nice and smooth. Now we're ready for our next layer, but before I do that, I'm going to rinse this real quick so I have it ready for the next layer. You guys are enjoying this videos so let me know the recipes and I'm actually gonna put this one this way press down you see how nice and spongy that is okay again the simple syrup is going on Want to douse that if you have a squeeze bottle, it's probably good to use that. You could load it in there and just squeeze it out. And like I said, the good thing about sponge cakes, they retain their shape. You can make, I think I'm gonna make one soon, a sangria one with fruits and wine. So stay tuned for those. I might make this one with a cannoli filling the things are endless you could do with sponge cakes because they're they're nice they're a dry cake um sort of because you could dry, you could douse it and it'll take the flavor of whatever you're using okay So we did vanilla, chocolate, 
And I think we're gonna end off with the vanilla and that's it. But we'll see. Another retaining wall. And it looks like I might have to refill my bag. I might make it. So that worked out good. Okay. All right, so vanilla. So I have chocolate left over. And I could spread it on top. I might dollop some underneath some rosettes. I don't know yet. I will see when I start to play with this. Or, or I could do vanilla on this side, be creative. And do half chocolate. You could do that throughout the cake too, you know. It's your design, you do it the way you want it. Do I want to do that? Vanilla, chocolate, then it'll be vanilla, chocolate, chocolate. So no, we're gonna spread this to the edge. Now you could do, which I might do. Let's do it, why not? I'm gonna put a layer of the chocolate right on top of the vanilla. And you're gonna say, why? I guess because I can. And you can too. But ideally, you would just end off with one of them. But I want to do something different outside the box. Put a little bit more. And you probably could put the middle layer too and just swirled in some chocolate and when it gave a different look too when you slice it. So there's endless ways you could do things, just be a little bit different. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, we're ready for our next layer. And this one we are gonna put upside down. And you can see you could bend this cake and nothing happens to it. And we're gonna press down, okay? And you can see it's the frosting, the buttercream frosting is oozing out a little bit, which is fine. And we're gonna douse this again with what? You got it. More of the rum simple syrup. Oh, I can't wait to, this one I'm really gonna, can't wait to try. I haven't had this since, I guess I was a kid. I think the last time I remember eating one. Rum is yum. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, huh? But yeah, it's good. And look how nice it just soaks right in. As soon as I pour it on, it goes right in, right in. That's the nice thing about these sponge cakes. Watch it roll off and roll right in. See that, it disappears. Okay, I think I, I don't have to think I'd get a little exaggerated. All right, so now what we're gonna do is gonna give this a little bit of a crumb coat, as we like to call it. 
and it's gonna go in the refrigerator and we'll let it set. Once it sets, then I'll put the finishing touches on it. So, let me get this off. Whoops. And I leave it in here because I might have to want to re-whip it. But I am going to do something different. I am going to make it a couple of colors, the icing. I have to tell you, look how great this icing is. Look how stable. Okay, that's what you want. Okay, let's take a little bit of the icing and we're gonna dabble some on top. Just a thin coat is what we want to do. That crumb coat so that when we come back to this, it could sit in the refrigerator for, I don't know, 20 minutes. Time for a coffee break, a little espresso, and then it keep me going. Okay, so we got the top of that. I'm gonna douse the sides a little bit. Just a thin layer, just want to cover it. Just want to get that base going. It's good to have the cake sort of almost at eye level. As you could see any imperfections that you might have and you're not bending all the way down to force these. This is not conducive, okay? And again, just thin crumb coat. And I am in no means a huge cake decorator, but I think I could hold my own when I'm off video and I take my time and I could play with it. Just wanna make sure I get the bottom of it, coat that real good. Okay, much better. These turntables are actually really good. If you don't have one, get one. If you like to play around like I do and bake cakes. And then you just wanna make sure this is nice and level. And you wanna brush from the outside in. Okay, I think I'm good with this for now. I'm gonna give it just a little, oops. Scrape a little too hard. Just want to try to get it a little smoother. And this sets up really nice, this buttercream. It maintains its shape. And when you put it in the refrigerator, it sets really pretty. Um, nice so that you could put on your next layer. Okay, I think I'm okay with this. Little spot down there. little spot over here there we go and voila we have our first crumb coat on guys thank you very much
I enjoyed working with you guys today. I am gonna put some almonds around the side of this. I'm also gonna put green and red. I'm gonna think I'm gonna use just cause it's Italian. It's um, Italian rum cake. And I just wanna make a little bit of a different look to the normal traditional look. So be creative, post your pictures. I'd like to see them. Thanks guys.